is the 1957 edition of the game of Risk. This game is still has some popularity today. It's transformed itself many times over in the intervening 50 years since they first launched this game. I played on this particular board when I was quite young. It's extremely different from the way we look at things today, and we will discuss all the differences before we talk about strategy versus tactics. Why? There's two happy dolphins here. What are they doing in the middle of a board game that has to do with nuclear warfare and international politics? Again, at the top of the board is a happy whale. Now, whales and dolphins are peaceful creatures. We love whales and dolphins. We think they're wonderful. So what are they doing in this game? Are we supposed to think that international warfare is a kindly and funny thing that will make sea creatures smile? I seriously doubt that. Now, we're going to go look at the United States and see how the western part of the, of the globe is operated in this game. So, the United States is pretty much the way we see it today. There's very few differences. For example, there's Quebec. It's still there. So is Ontario. Alberta and the Northwest Territory of Canada are all on this map. And so is the Eastern United States and the Western United States. Sorry guys, if you're in the Deep South and you love Old Dixie, you couldn't play Risk. You just really didn't matter, did you? On the other hand, let's go look at the other side of the planet. And we go over to Russia. Russia is the big opponent here. In fact, if we go to the top and over here, all the way across here where the whale is, all the way down to India, and all the way over, that's mostly Russian territory except for a little bit for China. China is this little tiny thing here. Mongolia is almost as big as China, which I think the Chinese would really dislike. But look over here between China, Russia, and the Middle East. And there is Afghanistan. And it's huge. Let's pan back and see how huge it is. Oh my. Afghanistan is this big area. China is the same size, or perhaps even a little bit smaller. Russia goes from here all the way over to here. And Ukraine, which is actually only a small part of Russia, is actually the entire western half of Russia going all the way up to the North Pole. And then there's Northern Europe, Southern Europe, and Western Europe all of which are the same size roughly as the Middle East. India is half the size of Afghanistan. So, what's in the news today? What's going on in the world? We're involved in yet another global war, the war against terror, and it's centered on Afghanistan right here. This is just incredible. When I was young, 1957, Afghanistan didn't loom that large, I don't think. I don't remember it being that big of a deal. I didn't hear about all the wars in Afghanistan. Here is Vietnam. Vietnam is part of this whole complex which they called Siam. And it's barely an important thing at all, though it is almost the same size as India, which I find rather amusing. India should be very insulted by this. But, of course, the Chinese should be the most insulted. What's really funny is that Kamchatka um, Peninsula is one huge section. Yakutsk is another big, big part that is almost equal to the size of the United States. Irkutsk has its own area, too. And then there's Siberia, which is this long, narrow piece. <laughs> and the Urals is another long, narrow piece. It's a very strange map, and it reveals a lot of interior thinking here, which I find very, very peculiar. In this game, we got to use these little squares to represent bases and armies. And we scatter them all around the board, trying to take over as much territory as possible. 
I placed these blue squares representing American bases in various positions where we already have bases today. By no means is this all the bases we have on this earth because we have well over 300 bases, many in foreign countries. Russia's bases are the red ones up there at the top of the map and China has one little black square because their bases are in China. The vast majority of bases are around Russia and China. We barely defend ourselves. In fact, this has been exploited by our opponents who are fighting strategic games against us since we are strong and all our opponents are physically weaker than our military, which is the biggest on earth, they have to use intelligence and skills and be wily and tricky in order to win. And Once again, Afghanistan is the center of the world. Our strategic activities are involved with trying to control Afghanistan militarily, while at the same time trying to be friends with them. But no one has ever succeeded in doing this. The only way you can deal with Afghanistan is to stand back, have an alliance with them, but not occupy them militarily and not interfere with their personal affairs. This is a lesson that we seem unable to learn and will be taught a harsh lesson just like Russia was. The Russian Empire crashed into ruin in Afghanistan. Part 2 about strategy and the game of risk coming up next.